This is my first ever guide to a station on the dark green line and it's really exciting for me. And I was thinking, what is there around here that could really make everyone interested in this video? There's got to be more than ghost towers, hidden neighbourhoods, obscure soys, undiscovered works of art. What else? A canal with so much funk that you're going to think you're James Brown after you watch the video, plus a bridge over the Chalpia River. Anyway, welcome to Sapan Taxin. The late 60s, early 70s car ownership had shot up massively, especially in Bangkok. More people commuting by car because in those days public transport in the city was pretty poor to say the least. So how do you get people across the river into the business district a lot quicker? Well, you build another bridge. Construction began in the late 70s and it was opened in 1982. In the middle was a space left for a SkyTrain project that didn't happen at the time and it was more than 20 years later before a real SkyTrain crossed the bridge into Tonbury. So 80% finished, 500 units plus sold. I think it's safe to say a lot of people lost a lot of money here, which is a damn shame. And over the years there's been film production crews, music video productions, all refused access here, which I think is probably a relief of the roadies having to lug all that equipment up these stairs. And I've also seen a few extreme urban sports videos with guys doing acrobatics at the very top. And as much as that is incredibly stupid, it's incredibly impressive. So nobody has ever gotten permission to come here? Nobody. None? None. All illegal? Illegal. We're not ever allow anybody to come in. Anyway, it remains here for how long, we don't know. There's a light right there and it makes it look like I'm wearing fake suntan when it clearly is obvious that I'm not. So we're going to head across the river now on the ferry from Saturn Pier and it goes across to the Pepsi Pier and the reason why it's called the Pepsi Pier is because there used to be the, the Pepsi factory right next to it which is not there now and what is there now is a strip of wasteland 
that hosts something called the Made by Legacy flea market every now and again. And I was almost in the Made by Legacy flea market a few months ago when I did the Klong sand video, but I kind of chickened out in the last minute. There was a little bit too many people around going in at the time and there was a huge queue. Anyway, I went back a bit later on and there was a funk band playing and they were playing some top tunes, trust me. Don't rock the boat, baby, or tip it over. They've been planning for years to expand Sapan Taxin BTS station because originally it was only meant to be the temporary terminus while the line was extended across the river into Tombury. And the problem was that extension into Tombury was delayed, so that ended up being the terminus for over 10 years. This is the Sapan Chalom Pan 53 bridge and it was originally, before it moved here, in a different location in front of Wat Tramit where Yawala and Charon Krum roads meet. Now the canal that it was spanning has now been filled in and it was moved here and split into two parts. The main part is right here across the Klong Saton and the other part is actually going across a canal next to Wat Yawana and we'll have a look at that in just a minute. So this is a bridge over an unnamed Klong. If I do find out what it's called, I'll put a subtitle right here a little bit later. The reason why I'm here is because the original Sapan Chalon Pan 53 bridge was broken into two parts and most of it is up there going over Klong Saton. The Fine Arts Department gave that bridge heritage status a few years ago. So my question is, does that mean this bridge also has heritage status?
So what began as an innocent turning down sat on Soy 19. It was really narrow, so I knew it had to lead somewhere interesting. It went through a community called Trop Ban Vet. I lost count of all the twists and the turns and the cats and the dogs. Anyway, it's brought me out here at Charon Rat Road. That's the end of my shooting day for today. And hopefully we'll find some more places like this tomorrow. Well, it's a damp and a wet Sunday afternoon here along Charon Krung Road. One thing you'll notice along this part of Charon Krung is that there's a lot of small klongs going across and they end up in that direction where the Chow Pier River is. This is the Klong Krui and there's a pretty sturdy looking towpath along the side of it. But there's a gate that looks like it's locked, but it's not. I've just seen a motorbike taxi guy go through it. So we'll see how far it goes. But a word of warning, we might actually walk past that guy taking a piss so telling you now see what I mean it looks like it's locked but it says no entry but it's open so we're gonna see how far we can get Well, a lot of these narrower clongs did serve a purpose when they were built. And I'm thinking maybe this was before they piped sewage away from houses and it all went along these smaller clongs because there's no room for a boat. So I'm assuming that the sewage would have went along here and directly into the Chalpia River. Well, just before the Klong Croy hits the river, it goes through this great big filter here. And there is a guy who's in charge of the filter. He saw me and was nice enough to let me through. And he's having a chat with the motorbike taxi guy. I get a funny feeling they're having a drink. Anyway, where the canal meets the river, there's quite a few riptides happening. And you can see fish jumping around, but it's definitely not the place to get stuck if you do fancy taking a dip to cool off in the hot weather. So that is the Klong Croy. In 1892, King Rama V commissioned a businessman called Luang Saton Ratchayut to dig the canal from Rama IV Road to the Chalpia River. And I don't think he ever thought it would end up looking like this. After the canal was finished, Luang Saton Ratchayut was given the rights to the land on both sides of the canal. This became known as Thailand's first ever development project. He went on to sell the land to some very wealthy people and the area became named after him. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that this canal used to be a lot wider and more attractive. It had trees on both sides. In the late 1970s, these were all ripped out and the canal was narrowed to make way for the Taksin Bridge. And of course, they needed the land on both sides for the extra cars that were coming over from Tonbury.
Right, we're going to go down a random soy now, and you may be thinking, hang on, he's actually alongside a canal. This canal towpath is the soy. This is Charon Krum 55, and it runs alongside the ghost tower there, and it goes all the way to a lake according to the map, so I want to see what that looks like. We're passing through someone's neighbourhood at the moment and there's a few shacks along the other side of the canal. Oh, and I'm loving the artwork all the way along. I can't take pictures or film all of it, so you'll have to come down here yourself. Anyway, we're almost at the end. I can see the flyover and surely we can't go beyond that, so the end is nigh. So the end is here, not quite actually, because it continues under Charon Rat Road and comes out the other side, but this is as far as I'm going. One thing I've noticed is this canal has got progressively filthier towards here. We've gone from having jumping fish near Charon Krung Road to garbage and filth down here. The Sirat Expressway is noisily rumbling overhead as well. Anyway, I want to get back to Charon Krung Road and take a few pictures of what Suti will run before it gets dark. We're almost at the Saturn Road intersection and there's one more place left to look at which will be a little bit more interesting now that it's dark and that's the Saturn Unique Tower, also known as the Ghost Tower. And by the way, if you want some steamed custard buns, check this place out. This area certainly has the vibe of a haunted place. There are bats flying around and there's echoey sounds coming from the lower floors of the Saturn Unique Tower. There is speculation as to whether it was built on an old graveyard, but if I remember rightly, it wasn't given the nickname Ghost Tower until after it was abandoned. So maybe people are jumping on the bandwagon. You know, everyone loves a good ghost story. This was one of many towers abandoned after 1997, the Asian financial crisis, and apparently this one is too expensive to, de to demolish, but uh, not structurally sound enough to finish off construction. So there lies a dilemma, doesn't it? What are they gonna do with it?